Thoughts on 2.1 homework. Let's see, if I saw this one, 9.2 to 10.13 with negatives on there, we just got to slope it. So on number one, if we got to slope it, that's you might remember we can draw it for sure, or elsewise you can do it by the minusing, and we'll take the second y, oops, the y value from the second one minus the first y, so that's negative 13, take away 2, over the x minus the other x, and that's 10, take away negative 9. And you can do it in the other direction if you like. It's whatever. There's other ways to do this. Anyway, so negative 13 minus 2 is minus 15. 9 minus minus 10 is like 19 because it's like a plus, And that's pretty good. If you do it, if you do like this minus that, then it'll get the negative on the bottom, but it won't matter. And so negative 15, 19 sounds good. Number two I wanted to talk about, we're supposed to find the slope here too. But it just gives us a picture and they don't really pick out dots or anything. So you just got to look around and see if you can find a good dot somewhere. Here's one that I came across. There's another one, and then another one. Let's see, here's another dot. Because if you chose like right here, like it's hard to tell where you are. So it's good to find out one where you hit a corner of the boxes. This one looks good. So then if we go from one dot to the next, where they're actually hitting whole numbers, then let's just rise and run it. One, two, three steps up, and then a one, a two, a three, a four, a five steps over. So you got three up and five over, and it's going kind of uphill. I didn't have to go downhill or backwards ever, so since it's an uphill-looking one, we'll cause it a positive three-fifths. Sorry for scribbling over it. It looks pretty good. Oh, here's another one. Check this out. So we're supposed to, essentially, we're analyzing a slope here. It says, a company discovers that to produce 590 new electronic parts, it will cost... Y equals 59 something thousand, then produce 950 new parts. The cost is 900 or 94 something thousand. And then they want to know compute the slope of the cost and choose the most accurate. And so, what they're doing here, guys, is we're just figuring out the cost per item. It looks like um, the phrasing on this and the way that they're expressing the answers is a little bit awkward to me. It, it, it's not necessarily that we're looking at the increase per item. But just that, you know, it seems like the cost is increasing as you as you get more items. I mean, it would, you know. Um, whatever, though. It doesn't matter. And so to keep these things basic, if we consider these things X's and Y's, and we're just saying, like, well, okay, if I went up from 590 parts, almost 600 parts, to ordering or producing 950 parts, that's a few hundred more. And so how much more is the cost, you know? And so then the cost will just increase by however much from 59,000 to 94,000. That's a few, you know, it's a bunch of thousand. And so we'll just kind of see the difference in the cost and we'll see the difference in the number of parts and we'll compare the two. That's all. And so let's see here. If we did look at the difference in cost, we'll take the second bigger cost minus the first cost. Uh, where should we do that? We'll go second bigger cost, 94,200. Oh, wait, yeah, minus, there you go. Minus the first cost is 59, 640. We'll minus that and see how much bigger one is than the other. You know, how much did the cost go up by, I guess. And then we'll compare that to how much did the parts go up by. It was 590, now it's 950. So we'll take that 950, take away the 590, and that'll give me some answer, you know. And then on the top, it'll be equal to some amount of thousands of dollars. And the bottom will equal to a couple hundred something. And the idea would be then, I don't want to do this in my head, but the idea is I guess we'll minus these and then we'll minus those. And then to get the answer, we have money over stuff and we'll just divide them. And you'll just hit it in your calculator, whatever your money answer was from the top, divide sign, however much stuff you had. Um, that you know the parts number and you just divide it and it should give you some answer looks like it's somewhere in the hundred dollar range here cool oh according to this the answer on my version of it was ninety six dollars whatever okay uh number seven is important That's, okay so this one on a bike bicycle Brooke rides for three hours and is eight miles away from her house after riding for 11 hours she is 24 miles away what is Brooke's rate? And so let's see here. Um, we're looking at three miles, eight miles from her house, 11 hours, 12, 24 miles away. 
So something that's important about this one is I need to figure out how much time she's been riding for in between these two. So we're talking after three hours, and she keeps on riding after those three hours, and then she ends up hitting that 11-hour mark. But let's think about that. From three hours to 11 hours, how many hours is that apart, you know? And you can do the minusing thing that way too. So that's from three hours to 11 hours, that's eight hours, eight hours more riding, you know? And then let's see here. That was the hours, right? Oh, shoot. They're asking us for miles per hour. We'll have to switch this up because this is hours, huh? Let's pretend like I did that right. And then, yeah, pretend like that's on the bottom. Okay, those would be like the X values. Those are on the bottom. Because if we're talking miles per hour, here's a little trick. This is why I bring this up. When they say miles per hour, per is like a divide thing. And so if they're asking us to express our answer in a particular way, in this case, miles per hour, we're going to have to do the miles on top miles on top, divide by the hours on the bottom, or miles over hours, you know. So I would want to put the miles stuff on the top, and so the hours will be on the bottom. So from 3 hours to 11 hours, that's going to be 8 hours different, or, yeah, 8 hours difference. But then we'll look at the difference in the miles. And so after the first point, she had gone 8 miles. After riding 11 hours, she went 24 miles away, or she had gotten to 24 miles away. So... On distance here, we're talking from 8 miles out to 24 miles out. Oops, I should subtract that backwards. Don't tell anybody that I mess up this much. Now we got 24 minus 8 is like 16 miles different. And so it looks like we're uh, if we're talking about this in terms of this is miles and that's 8 hours, that's 16 miles traveled over an 8-hour period. And if you divide it, like 16 divided by 8, that's just going to be two of them. That's two miles for every one hour, or two miles per hour. Um, number eight here, let's see. Give the slope and the y-intercept. Okay, this one is just one of those classic graphy things, so what you might remember from Math 42, if I saw something like this, I would just remember the start point, the up two here. This little plus two means up two. That's our y-intercept. And so remember y-intercepts are always on the y line that's who, that's what happens if you plug in a zero for x so we always put it as like zero and then whatever the y amount is but it's two in this case if we're going by shortcuts and then the slope here is just three over one and you could just put three if you like if you want to put it as a fraction it's three over one but we're really just identifying things in mx plus b form like the olden days and of course we can have more conversation about why that's a zero two if we need to let's see what else Okay. Oh, graph the equation here. And so now we have f of x equals 5 thirds x minus 3. There's a bunch of ways to do this. Feel free if you're not comfortable going shortcuts. It's okay to do a little x and y chart, like plug in a 0, and then maybe I'd plug in a 3 because that way they'll cancel with the other 3 on the bottom. This works. But I think by shortcut, you guys might remember this thing where we say if that's a minus 3, instead of going up 3, I'll go down 3 to start. So we'll put a down 3 dot to start with because the minus 3, and then a 5 thirds is the slope, and that means from here we have up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then over 1, 2, 3. And we just connect the dots from there. Looking good. Here's another weirder one. This one is, we have to graph this f of x equals 1, and there's not like a slope mentioned, it's just f of x equals 1. They say to do it by a table of values. Uh, you don't have to if you know what you're doing, but... I mean, I feel like this makes the best sense of it, so maybe that's why they brought it up. But a table of values means I'm saying f of x equals 1. And remember, that means whatever number I plug in for x, pick your favorite x, 0, 1, 2, 3. It doesn't matter. Whatever I plug in for x, the function is going to be equal to just 1. And there's no place to plug in an x over here, so it's not like it would be 1 times x or anything. It's just the number 1. So we're just saying the y part is always going to be 1 everywhere, even a sideways looking 1. There you go. And so it's just always equals 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. So the y value is always 1, and we just got to see what that looks like. So, I mean, you could do that by putting the dots on there. We have the dot 0, 1 is at 0 over and 1 up. And then we have 1, 1 is 1 over and 1 up. Then 2, 1 is going to be 2 over and 1 up. And then 3, 1 is 3 over and 1 up. And it's like you get the idea after a while that no matter what, this line is just one step up everywhere. So you can go as far as you want, left or right, and it's just always going to be one step up because the y value is always 1. 
So that's good enough there. Let's see. What else are we going to talk about? Oh, yeah. So this is important, too. Okay, find the equation of the line through the points of this and that. And so you can see their suggested answers down here. I wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about that. Here's my take on that. You guys might remember, and I'll give you the quick take, of course, but you might remember if we take the slope between these two points, that's a good start. So we'll do the little y minus y and x minus x thing. y minus the y and x minus the x. And so that's negative 25 minus 29 x minus x is negative 6, take away 6. It might have been easier to do it the other way with all the negatives here. Oh, let's see, that's negative 2, it'd be like negative 54, I think. And then these make like a 12 or something, also negative. And then we'll just reduce it down the best that we can. I think we can cancel the negatives. Looking at this, I think 6 goes into both. So if you like reducing, let's see here, 6 goes into both. So 6 into 12 is 2. 6 into 54, yeah, that's 9. So we're looking good now. So we got ourselves a slope here. Slope. Okay. But beyond that, we had said something in class about uh, the slope between two points is always the same if it's a straight line and blah, blah, blah. And so one take on this would be if we took the dot 629, then we could say 629. If I slope that between that one and not just the 625 dot, but the 629 dot sloped with any other dot on the line. And so the way we always say that is in general, we'll generalize it and say, and any, I'll even put any, there we go, and any xy that's on the line, the slope between these two is still going to be 9 over 2 because the lines always point in the same direction. But this is, I wanted to give you a quick take on the video here, so we'll just finish it up. And so we go y minus 29, y minus 29, over, and so that's y minus y, and then x minus x, over x take away 6, going to be equal to the same old thing, because we know the slope of the line is never changing. It's always pointed that direction. Equals 9 over 2, and then because of some undefined issues, because we don't like to have a 0 on the bottom, and like if we plug the wrong thing, it could be, we don't leave this bottom part over, we times it over to the side. And that'll put us in what we call point slope form. So the x minus 6, we're going to times over here, and it'll end up over there. And so the way it'll end up looking is this. We'll have y minus 29 still sitting there. y minus 29 still sitting there equals, equals, and then there's the 9 halves. And then we're timesing the x minus 6 over to the other side next to the 9 halves. So that's x minus 6 there. This is not the only way to write the equation for the line, but this is a good way. We call that the point-slope form, using this particular point. Anyway, wanted to mention that. That's my take on that kind of thing. Let's see here. Average. Yes. Okay. Number 20. It says, what is the average rate of change in the number of living wages? Oh, wait. In the number of living wage jobs from 1997 to 1999. So... They have this graph here, and this is the year, and this is the jobs you're talking about. It's just saying average rate of change between 97, that's here, and 99, that's here. And so rate of change is going to go the same way as usual. And notice that the way they want this expressed is jobs per year. So jobs on top, years on the bottom. And then what they're essentially saying, guys, is we're going to take a slope to find the rate of change. But we're going to ignore the year in between. We'll just take the average between here and there. So we'll skip from this year to that year and just slope between those two instead of finding all the years in between everything. And so we're just looking at these two right now. And so here we go. Jobs on top. That's 760 minus 670. And then years on the bottom. That's 1999 minus 1997. Sometimes we'll substitute smaller numbers in for X, you know. Or sorry, for the years, because these are like, it's almost 2,000, you know, it's a big number, but whatever. And then we'll just minus it here. Uh, shoot, let's see. Um, well, 1999 minus 1997 is 2. That's good enough. And then 760 minus 670, uh, that's almost 100, right? So that's like 90, I think. And so 90 divided by 2, they're talking about 90 jobs over a span of two years is what essentially what we're saying. Before we, like, divide that, 
where the, what's trying to be said here is in a two year time, the jobs went up by 90 of them. And so, you know, I mean, there's other like units to consider. We're talking about something per 1000. I skipped that anyway. But what they're talking about here is the jobs have gone up by 90 in a, in a time span of two years. And that's what this all means. 90 jobs per every two years. But if it's 90 jobs in two years, we could reduce that fraction down. Two into 90 goes 45 times. That's 45 jobs per year. So we'd say jobs per year or something like that. 45 jobs a year. And then the other part of that's the same kind of thing. And then, let's see. Oh, yeah. Wanted to talk about this, too. Same idea here. So average rate of change from... 2 to 4 with this function. It's not given an equation or anything. We just have this weird bendy function. And so they're saying rate of change from 2 to 4, the average here. And so the reason I bring it up is because, okay, on mine, if you look from 2 to 4, it's a straight line, and we'll be able to find the slope. And so whatever. But sometimes, yeah, depending on the version of the problem you get, there might be like, you know, it's all this up and down stuff from one year to the next. And it's okay you can ignore all the ups and downs in between because, again, we're trying to find an average rate of change like on the last one. So just like we skipped the year 1998 on that one, we're going to skip year three on this one. And so here we go. We're going to go from two to four. And uh, since they give us it by a graph, we can just do this slow visually and just say here we are at year two or just f of two, really. And here we are at f of four. And then we'll just rise and run it. And this one goes one, two, three, four steps down. So minus 4. And then we're going to go over 2. So minus 4 over 2. Reduce it. We got ourselves a whole number of 2 over 1 negative. Looking good. Giddy up.